the yeah. uncounted enemy of Vietnam deception. And what we said effectively in the documentary was that, the, that General Westmoreland had ordered that the books be cooked, that, they're, that if the United, that, that if the people of the United States knew how many enemy were still out there, we were, we were told that uh, we were killing more of them than they could put back in the field and that little by little, through attrition, the crossover point were reached, was reached, that we could kill more enemy than they could, could put back in the field, which was an outright lie. And a man from the CIA, Sam Adams, went out there, found out, got the documents, and came back and, and said on the air that there were at least double the number, at least double the number of enemy out there, and more coming down the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Westmoreland knew, in my estimation, Westmoreland knew that if the American people were to learn that that was going on, that they had this endless supply of men coming down, that the American people would be even more um, disillusioned and more anxious to get out of that war. And he thought, thought that he could eventually win the war against even all of them that were coming down. And so what happened was that uh, in the courtroom, in the trial, a man by the name of McChristian, Joseph McChristian, a general, a friend of Westmoreland, and his intelligence chief said that what Westmoreland had done was simply wrong. His order, the, the man who, who Colonel uh, Gaines Hawkins, who was the chief of order of battle there, said that what the general had done was dishonest. <coughs> and in the court, Room. I'm sitting behind him. The plaintiffs are up here and the defendants are back here, and it was as though he had taken a couple of rounds in the belly. I mean, you didn't say that to him, to the general. And uh, finally, finally, um, it was five months in the federal courtroom, and he finally pulled out, picked up his own tab. We didn't have to retract a word. We said that he was a patriot doing his duty as he saw it. The documentary was flawed procedurally. A man by the name of George Crile, a friend of mine, then and now, and he knows that I feel this way, <laughs> didn't let us know that he had avoided or evaded certain CBS News standards in putting it together. Um, he had a thesis that he was set out to prove, and the, and the thesis that he had was effectively accurate, but he did uh, some dishonorable things along the way to putting the piece together. Um, showing, he did most of the interviews himself. I interviewed uh, General Danny Graham and, and uh, Walt Rostow, who was an assistant in charge of Vietnam to a certain degree, to Lyndon Johnson and uh, Westmoreland, but Crow did some of the interviews, and if he didn't like what he got, uh, on one occasion he had the man do it over, showed what other people had said, and then he had George Allen do, redo the interview. None of us knew that he was doing it, except his film editor and his film editor blew the whistle on George. Raised hell inside the organization. No, I, I contracted, if you want to call it that, a clinical depression. And uh, on one occasion, I, I, it, it was devastating. To sit there in that courtroom day after day after day for month after month and hear yourself called a fraud and a cheat and a liar and so forth, and uh, that's, that it's not easy. <clears throat> and I had never, I didn't realize what had hit me, and finally I learned what had hit me, that it was a depression. I had gone off to Ethiopia to get out of the courtroom to go do a story about, this was during the famine in Ethiopia, and I caught some kind of a bug, and by the time I got back I was exhausted and wound up in the hospital between depression and uh, whatever the bug was. And um, 
the first flowers that I got when I got back, to, well, when I was in the hospital, the first flowers were a box of, uh, not lilies, not tulips, jonquils, no, in any case, some blue flower, uh, a box of them from bulbs from uh, General William and Kitsy Westmoreland, his wife, which I thought was quite extraordinary. He, he realized. I mean, it almost, it almost killed him, almost killed me. <laughs> Libel trials are not fun. <laughs>